Hi, I'm George and welcome to part three of the Horizon project. Now in last week's video, we saw how the two lever mechanism works uh, in principle. And so this week we're gonna have a look at it in terms of how it works on the Horizon project. Now the staging mechanism itself is located part way up the uh, booster segments themselves. Uh, and that's for a couple of reasons. One's to keep the uh, weight forward so that the rocket's a bit more stable. And the second reason it's not high enough that the boosters themselves provide some support for the sustainer. Now, had we mounted the sustainer right on the end of a booster like this, uh, it's very hard to keep those aligned and especially during those high accelerations, you're likely to snap the staging mechanism. So when it's located inside like this, the booster segments provide support um, for the rocket. And so let's have a look at it in detail. There are two critical functions that this mechanism must serve. First, it's used to hold down the entire rocket while it's on the launch pad. Now at 1000 psi, the booster will exert a force of around 7000 newtons on this mechanism. The booster's nozzles won't be held down individually like they were with the Polaron G2 rocket. And second, it's the staging mechanism for the sustainer that also has to provide all the support for it during acceleration. Now this will be a peak load of around 2500 newtons. This mechanism consists of two main components, the support bracket and the stager body. The bracket itself has a central tube with six radiating struts that connects to the booster segments. And the stager body is designed to fit snugly into the central tube. Before starting the actual hardware, we first 3D printed the bracket and stager body so that we could get a sense of their size and shape and potentially what interference there may be with other components. We also printed a representative nozzle and a prototype part of the primary lever that secures the nozzle. After a couple of tweaks, we were pretty happy with the overall design and how it went together, and so we decided to make the actual flight hardware. First off, we made the central carbon fiber tube. It's made from several layers of heavy duty carbon sleeve. Like always, we've used West Systems epoxy for this. After it cured, we pulled it off the mandrel and cut off the ends. It was then machined down on the lathe to the exact size. Machining carbon fiber is pretty messy and so we always wear a respirator for this. And here's the tube sanded and complete. Next, we made the stager body out of a bar of aluminium alloy to fit the carbon tube exactly. When working with such high loads and pressures, tight tolerances become very important.
at the top of the body is the sustainer nozzle seat. Now this has an o-ring that seals against the inside of the sustainer nozzle. This is the surface that provides all the support for the sustainer during acceleration. Below that will be the primary lever that locks into the sustainer nozzle. Next is the thrust string or the thrust shoulder. All the energy during hold down and the launch is transferred through this one interface. Next is a long section to the bottom of the stager. This has been machined down to reduce weight. The length of this was determined by the length of the support bracket tube and was chosen so that there was enough support for the struts to hold the force and give enough room for the length of the two levers. At the bottom is a groove for a circlip that holds the stager body inside the tube. And finally at the bottom is the release mechanism grip. It's similar to the sustainer nozzle, but it has to hold the entire rocket down, so it has much stronger walls. Internally, the body also contains a ball bearing that serves as a non-return valve. We add this small tube to keep it in place. Here is a cross-section view of the stager body. This non-return valve is specifically designed so it's forced open via a pin while the rocket's on the pad. This allows us to depressurize the sustainer easily in case we need to abort the launch. As soon as the rocket launches, this valve closes. There is a second non-return valve in the launcher to prevent water flowing further back down with a pressure release valve between these two non-return valves. Here is the part of the launcher that the entire stage of body sits on. And here is the pin that keeps the non-return valve open. We also machined up a blind nozzle that will allow us to do full pressure tests with the stager without the need to use the actual sustainer. So that's it for this week. In the next video, we're gonna have a look at how the levers fit onto the stager. And also uh, we're gonna do some full on pressure tests at a thousand PSI. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.